Hi, I'm Duffy Dixon with Business Radio X. We are at IATL. This is a new facility in Alpharetta. And joining me is Brian Mulligan, and he is with Applied Information. And I will just give people background. You've been telling me you were going to give me a ride in an all fully automated car, and we still haven't done it. Yeah, we've got to coordinate that and set that up because it's pretty interesting how... Uh, far Teslas are now in uh, in the autonomous driving and you can uh, drive all the way from here to the airport without actually having to make any decisions at all. It'll change lanes and overtake cars and, and exit the freeway and all of that by itself. Do you just like to drive and freak people out? Do you like say no hands, hold your not, hands up? Not and really and the reason okay. being is that the sense at the moment is that we're driving with the car. In other words it's me and the car driving with it handling the steering wheel and the pedals and me looking out the window and checking that it's all safe and, and so forth. And so uh, it takes about a thousand miles to really learn how to drive an autonomous car. And because, uh, as I like to say, 99.9% .9 of the time, it'll drive perfectly. The rest of the time, it's going to kill you. Right. So, so you've got to be uh, aware that something it might happen, um, a log might fall off a truck or whatever the case may be. But it's much less tiring than driving yourself. I did a trip down to Daytona recently, in fact, last weekend, and uh, driving eight hours then, eight hours back was completely effortless because the car drove the whole way. Wow, this is really your dream. I mean, this is so cool. This is the first of its kind facility in the world that lets all of these technologies and these car makers and everyone get together. And it's not just about making the cars smart or making them you know, self, self, you know, self-sustaining, but it's also about improving like safety. Oh correct and so the big things are let's save lives and improve the traffic and so there's a, a, a you know you get down to the detail how that's done and so um, this is called connected technology so the cars can talk to the cars but the cars can also talk to the traffic lights so your car won't let you run a red light. It will also um, provide a convenience application, which is actually really cool when you, when you use it, um, is that you'll drive to this traffic light that you can see up the road here. And uh, generally the way that this traffic light, there's a two minute wait. Now if you don't know that there's a two minute wait, you're scanning the traffic light the whole time. Is it changing? Is it changing? Is it changing? Right. And that's tiring. And, get, and frustrating. And frustrating. So well, who, 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 what's this all about? Well, as soon as it says that there's 120 seconds, then 110 seconds, you say, oh, okay. I've just got to wait. And it becomes, you know, a much more peaceful way of driving, less frustrating. And then uh, four seconds before the light changes uh, to green, in case you got distracted. I mean, I know you wouldn't, and I know I wouldn't, but other people t check the text. Yes, I've also said to one of our other people we spoke to, the person who is waiting in the front of the line to turn left when the green arrow comes on, it is your responsibility to stare at the green, you know, because, you know, there's like two people get through a light Correct. because someone isn't paying attention. Exactly what happens. And so now what it says, your, the speakers of your car say, get ready for green. Oh, that's nice. And so what it does, then you pay attention, you wake up and the light changes green and, and off you go. And so even that, I mean, in traffic engineering terms, if we take a, save a second to two seconds in what's called the startup delay, we'll create 10% more capacity in the road network without spending any more money. And also this technology is a lot more uh, cost effective than a lot of other options. We spoke to the fire department uh, in Marietta and they have this technology. Yeah and they were talking about having to build another fire station because they couldn't get, they, were, they didn't have the response time they wanted. Instead, they put in this technology and it's at fixed a the problem. At a fraction of the cost. And that's the interesting thing about technology. Uh, it just costs a fraction compared with what we call a concrete and asphalt. Mm -hmm. So typically, well, no matter the, you know, a, a typical size city here in in a land has got roughly 100 or 150 traffic intersections and you can equip them all with this uh, traffic technology for the cost of building a new traffic intersection. That's how affordable it is. It, that's how affordable it is. As you, as this technology... Uh, oh, sorry, I'm, ju I'm just going to well, tell one other yeah, small please. story about <laughs> how affordable it is. I was describing to the Atlanta Regional Commission uh, about this technology and how to make the buses work better. Yes. So let's make, let's make the buses, blah, 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 the whole conversation. And uh, so they talked about the number of intersections in Atlanta. And I gave them an estimate of how much all of this would cost. And uh, the, the guy looked at me and he said, in our world, that's called a rounding error. <laughs> and so, yes, yes. Uh, yes, when you're used to building billion-dollar bridges, the new, the, the, you know, the new uh, 
uh, intersection of, of 285 and 400, mm -hmm. I think is roughly a thousand million dollars. And so, uh, when you're talking about technology, it's not anywhere nearly that expensive, which is which is great because this is the way of the future: is to use technology uh, to make the traffic work better and to save lives. We kill, you know, 36,000 people a year on the roads, and it's just not okay. And this technology really can save those lives. There have got to be naysayers, I'm sure, in everything there are. What are some of the things that you, some of the myths or things people would think, and you want to? clarify or correct them on? I wouldn't say they're naysayers. Um, this is a longer story, so I'm going to try and okay. summarize it for you. But it goes something like this. Um, that for the last hundred years, since the invention of the automobile, local and state and county governments has been responsible for building out the road network. They own the roads. Right. So when we're talking about changing the paradigm, changing how things work from building concrete and asphalt to deploying technology, they go, really? I'm not sure whether I'm ready for change. And it's, a, it's not a Georgia problem, it's not an uh, Atlanta problem, it's a, it's a universal problem. That uh, doing change in a, in, for local gov for government, generally, is just very, very hard. And so uh, that's the biggest problem, is uh, the, the, the potential to do nothing. And uh, so that, that's the, the, not the, the naysayers is, Really? I, I'm not sure whether smartphones are a good idea, but it's kind of a little bit late for that. And so what's happened is we've got these early adopter cities like Marietta and Alpharetta and so forth, uh, who's saying, you know, we'll go first. And what we're going to do is we've seen it work to, to save all these lives of the, the paramedics. And what does that does is all the other stuff is just built on as a layer on, on top of that. On top, that's what we call day one applications is is uh, saving lives for the paramedics and then also for the transit and so forth. And you've already got some data now. You've got statistics. So what is this complex, this building? What does this mean? Because it sounds like everyone may want to get together, but there was nowhere to do it. This brings everybody sort of to one place. Right. And also the devil's in the detail on a lot of things. So what in the United States, the traffic infrastructure is very fractured. You think, well, who's in charge? Well, there are 10,000 cities, counties, and states that buy, operate, and maintain traffic. So there's nobody in charge. Right. They're all just doing their own thing. And so what you'll see is, so for example, we just done a, no, won a nice job in Hawaii. So how would we set about testing what happens in Hawaii? Well, first you get an airplane and fly to Hawaii. No, you come to the IATL, and in one of the bays of the laboratories, there's the traffic equipment that's used in Hawaii. And then you can test what happens in Hawaii without having to actually go there. And so what we have is the infrastructure uh, or automotive technology laboratory, as we're calling it. And so the, the, the automotive folks, if they want to know what's happening in Phoenix, Arizona, or in Dayton, Ohio, we know exactly which traffic control equipment is there. And we can set all up so that, that um, for example, the Ford Motor Company or something like that, who have announced they're doing connected vehicles, can test nationwide in the traffic right here in Alpharetta, Georgia. So cool. So very cool. So we look forward to this. We want to come back and actually do the testing. Yep. Um, and, and yeah, I want my free oh, my free ride. I'm ready. And I will be the person next to you. Since you'll be watching the road, can I hold my hands up and wait? Well, yeah. no, because I'm not driving. That's not going to no, work. But, Maybe but, I'll watch and no, you do. Yeah, well, we'll figure it out. What, what you do is you, you drive <laughs> and I'll sit in the passenger <laughs> seat and I'll explain to you how it all works. How oh, about it's that? wonderful. Thank you so much, Brian. But, we appreciate but, it. And congratulations. This is but, huge. Thanks so much. Yes, indeed it is. Uh, as, uh, as the Lieutenant Governor says, the, the, uh, the best days in Georgia are ahead of us. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us. Thanks so much.